Hi again then guys and welcome back to Gran Turismo 6. Now the funny thing for me is seeing how popular these Gran Turismo 6 reviews are now compared to when I used to do them. Now of course part of that is because the channel is significantly bigger, that goes without saying, but it is funny to see and even to feel within myself how exciting it still is to go back even as recently as Gran Turismo 6 and look at the cars which we miss already <laughs> and a lot of them are coming back of course the JDM icons various others but there are cars that are really good but also really easy to forget and for many people I think they've actually forgotten this one you see some people talking about it but not a huge amount and it's a very significant car because this is part of a revisiting of arguably the most important review series that I've ever done on this channel. Because it was the first review series we ever did on this channel, Spirit of Le Mans. If memory serves, way back in maybe 2015, possibly even earlier, and the first review we ever did was incidentally the Jaguar XJR9, which is an interesting bit of trivia for you. That's the first car HSG ever reviewed. So that's pretty cool. Now, as far as this vehicle, the reason why it's significant is because it is the only LMP2 car that Gran Turismo has ever featured. That's interesting. And it's not the only car that is the only one of its kind. The V8 supercar, for instance, what we used to call the Tickford, the Ford Falcon, that is also the only car of its kind in the series. And of course, we've reviewed that one as well. But for now, we're talking about this one. So what makes it different apart from the obvious answer of rules and regulations? Well, in many ways it's similar to an LMP1 and even to a Group C. The weight is still 900 kilos. It's got a four and a half liter engine, which is probably bigger than you were expecting. Looks like the kind of thing that could easily be maybe a two liter turbo. But in terms of power and torque, that is where you see the biggest differences because it has no way near the same level as LMP wants, even at the time. You're looking at 472 horsepower and a surprisingly good 441 pound-feet of torque. Now, this is not a hybrid. Of course, that wasn't the thing yet in Le Mans, so it's a much more pure experience, which is another reason why I like it so much. It feels much more raw. But one of the reasons why GT6 players loved this car so much was the cornering ability. The Zytec handles, I would say, like no other LMP in the game. Now, of course, being an LMP2, you would kind of hope that that was the case. But after driving quite a few LMP2 models in Forza, such as the Mazda B0986 or the Porsche RS Spider, which was always the best one, they felt really good. But in many ways, they, so, uh, they felt very similar, let's say, to other prototypes. Not the same, but similar. And that's partially due to the physics of the games. With Gran Turismo 6, in particular on this occasion, this definitely feels very very different and part of that at least in chase cam is how low the camera is on this car and you'll see that later on in the video it feels like you're driving a go-kart and because of the fact that you have like two three sometimes more power less like two or three hundred horsepower less in some cases and even more when tuned you can actually wring more out of this car's engine and push it far further than you could in say a 1200 horsepower pescarolo hybrid now, of course, that's not to say that this is going to put in better lap times than something like that can, but it just means that it's this interesting situation in a similar way to the bike world where you will often hear riders say that you can much more proficiently push something like a 125 or a 250cc motorbike much harder around a track and get more out of its engine than you ever could with something like a one litre MotoGP bike. Not only because of the value of the vehicle and worrying about breaking it, but because you can just wring more out of the engine because it's capable of less. In a similar way, the Zytec feels like that. You've only got the same kind of power as a 2007 Nissan GTR, but in something that weighs 900 kilos. So slow, it is not, but the fastest of prototypes, it never will be. Now, you're still looking at around 225 miles per hour with low downforce and longer gearing on Route X. So as I said, it is not slow by any stretch, but that's nothing compared to the other prototypes. It sounds good compared to GT Sports top speeds, but in Gran Turismo 6, that wasn't even close. Now, in terms of what the car could do and how it compared, of course, we didn't have the same class system. 
it was performance points instead of Group 1, Group 2, etc. And that's one way in which I think this car had more use in GT6 than it easily would now if they brought it back. Because let's be honest, it would probably end up in Group X. And if it did, you get very little use out of it apart from one make racing, which would be fun, but not the same. Back in GT6, you could put this up against Audi R8s or R18s or... Uh, you know, Mercedes CLK LMs from different time periods in different performance point levels, different power levels, and it can actually beat some of those vehicles. I mean, you put this thing up against the Panos, for instance, you're probably going to beat it, even a fully tuned Panos, because the weight advantage of this one, the cornering ability, the level of grip, and also one of the best things about the Zytec is the driver feedback. Because not only do you have less power to deal with, which makes it far more forgiving for beginners, it's also just a great vehicle in terms of what it tells you. You know everything that the vehicle is doing at all times. There are some cars that just feel dull. And I don't mean they're boring, I mean the steering is dull, the feedback is dull. It feels like you're almost not needed. A perfect example of that for me would be something like the road-going version of the Audi R8, either the V8 or the V10, or even something like a Nissan GTR. Is it fast? Yes. Is it fun? Well, that's a very different question because some people confuse winning races with having fun. You can have fun from winning a race, but if you have to win a race to find the car fun, then I would argue that means that the car itself isn't fun. It's winning that's fun. Whereas you could take something like uh, Pagani Zonda and have a ton of fun with it driving on its own without ever racing it at all. And that's the difference. To me, the Zytec is that kind of car. You can drive this thing on its own and have just as much fun you know, breaking your own lap times or just driving it fast for the sake of it than taking it in a championship and winning. Whereas with some, and in a similar way, I would say here, the Pascarolo, for instance, the hybrid, I never felt that that was a particularly fun car. It's overwhelmingly fast and very good, but I never just drove it for the fun of it. And I don't know many people who did. This one, on the other hand, everyone smiles. And when they talk about the Zytec, it's just got that kind of personality to it. Sure, it doesn't have the power, it doesn't have the torque, it doesn't even have the speed, but it's quick in its own way. It can destroy most, you know, sub prototype cars, GT3s, that kind of stuff. And it does the job. It doesn't try to be something that it's not, but for what it is, it definitely is an overachiever. For a car with 470 horsepower, it's very impressive, it's very quick. And I would say it's actually probably one of the coolest DLC additions to Gran Turismo 6 overall. And certainly a very significant one, because as I said, it's still the only LMP2 car we've ever had. So again, it's not like you've exactly got much to compare it to. But overall, that's probably it for my thoughts on the Zytec. I know that many of you guys love this car. It was the full premium, I believe a super premium, in fact, at the time. So who knows, we could see it return. I would actually say this probably has a pretty decent chance of coming back. And in a funny kind of way, I could almost imagine it coming back alongside the Delta Wing <laughs> or something like that. Those weird little more unique race cars in Gran Turismo 6. But overall, that's it for my thoughts. We will be revisiting this series again. And in case you're wondering, the next episode, whenever that will be, we'll probably be revisiting the Panos, the GTR1 at Spa. So as I said, I'm not sure when that episode will drop, but that's what you've got to look forward to if you stick around, or stuck around even, to this point in the video. And of course, if you want to check out my other reviews from GT6, you can find them in plenty of playlists on this channel. But overall, that's it for my thoughts. I'll see you next time, and for now, as always, thanks for watching.